Hello, my friends. Back to back to normal Thursday evening. Let's bring color to our lives. So, hi, Michelle. Good to see you, girl. How are you? Did you have a nice um, holiday weekend? Hope you did. I hope you did. Guys, when you join me, just say hi to me and let me know that you're watching. That'll be absolutely fantastic. My name is Angela. I'm the owner and creative energy from Elfen Helden. Hi, Tanya. Um, I'm an elite retailer for Dixiebel over here in Frankfurt in Germany. So when you join me, just say hi to me. Let me know where you're watching from. And if you haven't done it yet, guys, please pop over to my page, also Instagram. And just leave me a like and a follow there. That'll be absolutely fantastic. So um, today we're having fun. Oh well, I'm having fun at least. So um, I hope you, I hope you'll have fun too. I have to warn you, we are not using the product as it is supposed to be used. So that's um, that's um, right from the beginning. We are working with the patina paints, but I'm working them a little different this time. Um, but uh, we're getting about the same effect, basically. I'm, you know, I like to stress out my products and see if it works. Um, it does, uh, because I'm using hardly any paint. So the Patina paints by Dixiebel are special paints. The paints themselves, they come in iron, in bronzer, and in copper. They <laughs> they, um, they have real metal particles in them. So this is the reason um, if you have that patina spray with it, um, you get like a rusty effect. You can see here that that's what we've just done in the German life. This is in work and I'm going to show you the other bits later, which are already finished. So, um, bonsoir, Michelle, coucou. <laughs> so, um, you're supposed to add like one layer of the the paints on here you can mix them you know like uh, that you have like uh, um whatever a little bit of iron and that you get like the patina effect from rust and patina together that works but you put down the first coat you let it dry um, and then you put down the second coat um and you use the spray straight away while the second coat is still wet Otherwise, the um, patina effect will not work. The paints have to be wet. As I said, I'm not using them as they're supposed to be used. I'm going to use them different. But let's carry on and see what happens. Cheers, coffee. It is 7 p.m. over here. I don't know where you're watching from. I always have to have my coffee. I'm, but I'm putting my coffee a little further away because um, the patina... Not the paints themselves. We were working, by the way, we were working with iron. We were working with bronzer. Um, I already poured a little out and I'm putting them far away because I don't want to have them contaminated with anything because we already used with the, the green spray here. So I'm going to put on my gloves straight away. Even the paints themselves, they are, um, they are water-based. You can use them on their own if you only want to have like the they are a little shimmery. If you only you can see I've already used this. So I'm going to reuse the gloves. Okay. So um here we're going to put on the first coat of the paints, Heimanhase of the paints, and then we go to the side where I've already put down the first coat and going to put there, the second coat, and you can see what I mean. I'm not um, using it um, as they basically are supposed to be used. So um, don't use good brushes with it because firstly, um, you want to have basically like a rusty crusty effect. And secondly, the paints, especially when you work then with the spray, um, they are pretty harsh to your, to your um, brush. So I'm putting down I'm not using a lot the first coat just a little and the second coat you know 
it's not supposed that like the paint has to be exactly in the same spot, you know, on top of each other. It's basically that you have already a layer on there um, to get it a grip. Yeah. So I'm just placing it in areas just a little where I think the natural patina will basically take place. There's already green spray on the other side, so I'm probably already contaminating it, which is no problem at all. Um, as I said, this is a rusty crusty effect and um, therefore everything, everything basically is allowed and everything works. It's um, nothing you can really control. Like with real rust, you, can, you can't really control rust, can you? Um, so, um, guys, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Again, please be aware this is not the usual way or the recommended way by Dixieville how to use those. This is just how I'm using them this time to get like um, the effect I want to basically get. I'm putting it on in a dabbing motion around the edges here to get like a, yeah, basically um, where the paints uh, or where the, the natural aging of something standing outside in the elements with rain, stuff like that, basically what happened there. So always just like a little, a little of the paint. Releasing a little bit around here also. So here we want to have like a little bit of a gripping. So basically using my brush sideways and pulling it down in those areas where the dripping will take place. You know, when like the water has been running down in those areas. And I'm offloading my brush, which is almost dry on those, on the rest of here also. As I said, the, I don't want to have it too colorful. This is my, the first coat. So I'm going to do the bottom part Straight away. Also, same thing. This is basically, this is two elements. They're going to stand next to each other when everything is finished at the end. Um, so, and basically, if you, you know, if you don't like it at the end, or if you want to have more, if you want to have less, if you want to have more after you finish the second coat and you want to have more patina, it's not good enough for you. You just add a little more or I'm going to show you um, how I am controlling it a little. I brought my Voodoo gel stain again. I'm going to show you something with that can do always just like a tiny little bit and um, so on here this is the first coat I'm just adding here again this time it's not the way it is recommended by Dixie Bell this is how I am going to do it So, again, on the sides here, because I want to go down the sides, I'm taking my brush um, this way to pull it down. And when I'm on the knees, because it's pretty wide, that uh, hardware. I'm just like putting it white, just dragging it down. I want to have more. I just like a little more. 
There we go. Still, yeah, still at the first coat. And this is just a bronzer at the moment I'm adding. Just a tiny little bit. Yeah, it's a bit much. Let's see. Put it here. This is then supposed to dry before we continue with the second coat. But they dry pretty quick, especially the way I'm working them at the moment because this is like almost dry brushing. What I'm doing here. So um, now I'm going to come in with my iron. Same thing. Dab it on there. As I said, I want to have more iron than um, of the bronzer at the end. You can see it's already reacting because contaminated that's the reason I've got the paints far away from this here just applying it randomly where I think I want to have it the final result you can only see anyway when you have the basically the um, spray at the end on here and um, it's reacting It's a fun product. It's a real fun product. And those, um, this hardware is actually, it is metal. So it has been prepared. I've put the, um, the Patina Prime Start on there just to make sure it's protected as the obviously the patina is going to or the when i use the spray it's going to use the um are oh, you welcome michelle i hope you like it hi beth thank you hi sonia thank you i'm happy you're there guys so um same thing just pulling it down and everything you don't like, if you want to have less or if you want to have more. You just add more or you take or you put paint over it. You know, if you don't like what you've done, you just put paint on it and that's it. So, and this is, uh, this is just a fun look. First coat we're doing here. I'm going to speed it a little up down here on the second one same thing just put it on randomly i poured the um, patina paint into the lid which is going to be cleaned nicely afterwards before i put it back onto the jar the jar i've put far away so i'm not contaminating it or accidentally move with my brush into it um, because I've already used the green spray and um, it'll basically react with your paint in the jar also. So just um, that you're aware of that. So around the handle, as I said, I want to have like, you know, you could imagine that the, whatever, it was getting much paint, that around here, as they are metal, it will drip down. That's the reason I'm pencing it that way a little. So I leave it like that. That's, you know, the first coat just anyway. You can see it's going crazy on this side. That's what we've just done in the German life. And then we go to the side where basically I have already put down. Let's see. I've already put down the first coat. So let's move, guys. Let me have a zip of coffee. 
did you have any questions guys if you have questions leave them in the comments leave them in the comments hello Ute. so now we're going to use the patina spray but not as a spray Because this way, excuse me, this way, so now it is very important that um, basically, uh, I need my, excuse me, yes, this is getting messy now, let's get So the Patina spray is a product which is not exactly um, EOC free and environment friendly as it is going to make the things rust. So I'm just covering the floor here at the moment. That's the reason also I'm wearing gloves. And the spray has got like a vinegary smell. Oh guys, I'm good. You know, painting is exercising. Up and down, up and down. But muscle ache anyway. I've been taking apart three of those um, pellets, you know, to make pellet wood this, this week. So. <clears throat> so the patina spray comes with, uh, with this nozzle. Is it called a nozzle? I think it is called a nozzle which I always keep separate from the bottle. After I've used it, I clean it out nicely. Make sure when you clean the stuff out in the sink that you um, let loads of water run afterwards. If it's sinned, it's no problem and it, it won't harm your um, your pipes and things like that. But, you know, don't just like pour it in there and just leave it because then it'll do its job uh, if you have metal pipes there also. So, um, sin it up with water and that's fine. Clean the nozzle out because there's like um, there's like a, a spring in there, a metal spring, and if you don't clean it, you leave it on the bottle, it'll rust and um, it'll stop working. So um, I'm not using the spray, um, the nozzle this time. I've poured a little in here. I see if that's enough. You can see there's, can you see that there's like already bits and pieces swimming in there because there's already paint in there. Obviously when I use a brush, I'll take paint off because you're supposed to use it with, uh, with um, wet paint. So as I said before, this is not the usual way. This is not the way Dixie Bell recommends um, to have it used. That's the way I use it this time to get just like a slight different look. So. Also the reason I've got the other jars, the paint jars, out of the way, so I'm not um, contaminating it. And um, the, um, the lids will be cleaned nicely afterwards. Okay, this is, you can see, the first coat. The green you can see here, it's um, still from the um, water gels that we've put down the last time. So now I am, because we are almost dry brushing. And I want to control the dripping a little more. But as the patina is only reacting with the spray, as long the paint is wet. I'm already putting down a layer of the, the spray basically with the brush. And then I'm going to come in with my paint. So obviously, you know, you realize I'm going to go with my brush into the spray and uh, contaminate my lid. So this is the reason also why I am um, have the paints very far away. So, okay, let's start with the copper again, uh, with the copper, with the bronzer again. Again, tiny little bit, same thing. Just put it on here 
when you use the patina paints, um, the copper and the bronzer, they um, react pretty quickly with the with the spray. The iron needs the long longest time. So, and um, the spray comes in green and in blue wine over here in Europe. You can only get the green spray. Dixie Belle had it reformulated. So, but the um, the blue spray is um, hazardous good. So the transport costs, they are tremendous. They're about, I don't know, three to five times of the product cost. So it doesn't make any sense, especially the um, especially the just lay a little on here, especially the um, um, the blue spray only works with bronzer and copper and not with iron. For the iron you need the um, for the iron you need the the green spray so we are good to go with that so again it doesn't matter if you put it the paint exactly where you had the first layer of it this is basically just to get like a, a better coverage and uh, even when you use them um, layer those and use the iron in between that works pretty nicely that works pretty nicely so i'm just laying it down a little it's nice and wet from the um from the spray i've put down so i'm not going to get like as much the runny effect which i don't really want to have Oh, am I with my head in the way? So, and now I'm going to come in with the iron. Same thing. As I said, I want to have more iron on here than... Um... Sorry if my head was in the way, guys. I hope... Um... So now you can see there's already starting to react. As I said, the iron is needing the longest time. Just offloading my brush a little. Same thing down here. I left them on top of each other just for um, economical reasons. So I can do them both in one go, basically. So you realize, you know, I'm there is already the spray on here. I'm going into the paint, so the paint is basically reacting in the in the lid already. Also, so just make sure you're not um, getting that into into your. So now I'm going to come in again with my spray, with my brush, and add a little bit on top. So hi, Jill. How are you? So it's not so runny as we are used to when we are using the, the nozzle. So I'm just dabbing. You can see it is like it is reacting already. Even so, 
the iron is going to, to take the longest. So we won't see really the, the effect starting, but um, See if that's enough of the spray otherwise I just pour a little bit more in here but I think we'll be fine I'm more dabbing than stroking it on there to get like this irregular look basically as I said is this slightly you know it's got like a, a vinegary smell to it you're very sensitive but um, my feel is not as messy as if I would use the, um, the nozzle there's some of the spray going down but um, and if at the end you want to have more of the you know if not all the paint is reacting just add a little more of the paint and use the spray if you want to. You know, so okay, that's basically it. let it do its work and now let's go to the front so i don't don't want to have like a regular pattern on here so i'm just dabbing over it it's going on out there it's noisy so this is just like a very cheap cheap tip brush cheap tip brush mm. Still, I'm using the patina paints tonight um, in a different way. They are supposed to be used, not as uh, Dixie Bird was recommending it. So I've basically put down the first coat, almost like dry brushing on the edges. And on the second coat, I basically laid the spray with the brush down first before I dry brushed a little bit more. Oh, you can see here it's like already reacting. And up here on the edges, it is coming nicely. So let it do its work. I'm going to so as I said the lids will be washed out and I'm not going to um, I'm not worried about those brushes. I'm only using those with the patina paints and they don't need to be nicely cleaned. So let's go back to the front and excuse me, excuse me, and as I said, I'm stressing them completely out tonight and um, let's see. already dry. I can carry on with that in a minute also. Okay. So this needs to dry. This we've just done in the this is the second coat we've just done in the German life. So I'm going to let that dry. We're going to carry on here. I've done this one yesterday and this one is um is basically already hang on. I've already treated 
So I am going to wash that down. So basically, when you want to seal the patina paints, they are, you can use the um, patina guard, which is um, the sealer, which comes for the patina paints, but it is very smelly. It is very smelly. So, um, hi, Sarah. Um, so you can seal it basically with every top coat you can think of, but there might be some top coats because what happens when you, when the patina effect um, starts, it is basically taking off the surface, you know, it is reacting and it is flaking. So um, with some top coats, it can happen that it turns white which is not very nice. So I would recommend to wash it down first and then um, come in, uh, let it dry again. Don't worry, when you wash it down, you will panic because you think I've taken all the effect off. You are not, it is coming back. So wash it off normal. Take a damp cloth, wash it off so that the, the surface is off. What I am doing, I'm really scrubbing. Okay, so this is not what I mean by washing it off. I've got just some plain water and I've got the, um, I've got the um, finishing pad. It's already used. So that's the reason it's already got like the rust color and I've already done the bottom part. So I'm just going to put use the cloth underneath because I don't really want to have that, um, done here so I'm really washing that off because I don't want to have it that crazy and I want to reveal a little more of the of the color underneath I'm going to show you the water in a minute So the finishing pad, it's, it's a very gentle, um, abrasive pad. As I said, I'm not using the patina paint this time as they are recommended by Pixel. This is my own way because I want to have a different look. I'm going to show you the water in a minute because I'm taking, this is already dry. This is, uh, I've done that yesterday. But I'm basically taking a little of it off, especially in the middle here. I want to reveal some of the paint. And it's going to come back. You know, obviously I'm taking off a lot. And I'm controlling it a little, especially around here, that it looks a little more natural and um, it's not so. You can see this is, this is rust, this is rust. If you have areas where you want more, you, I want to reveal some of the paint underneath. I don't want to have it that much. I think that's fine. That's how I like it. So this can dry now. This can dry now. So you can see, but this is all going to come back. Don't worry. It's going to get it a nice, even more used look at the end. That's the water now. That's rust in there. I've taken off. So. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Oh, Jill, you're so busy. It is summertime. So, 
don't know if you can see that, but there's some of the original paint coming through, which I do want to have. So I'm going to let it dry now nicely. You know, even, you know, especially when there's water on here, obviously water and, um, and oxygen from the air is um, enhancing the rust effect. That's basically how rusting is happening. So that's basically what I am doing here. So this area, this looks really crazy over here. You can see that. Um, and even that, you know, when that's right, we're not going to do that tonight because we just put that on. We're going to do that. Uh, I'm going to do that tomorrow. So I'm just going to show you. Um, if you want to, because there is some already done that in the German life, if you want to enhance some of the areas where you think, oh, you know, I want to have a little more of the, um, I'm going to bring it a little closer. I want to have a, hang on, a little more of the, um, Uh, of the patina effect from the bronze or something like that. You could add a little more um, on the top. I'm going to use probably, um, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to use caviar or midnight sky. You can put down, what, what do you think? Sh shall I use caviar or midnight sky? I'm thinking midnight sky and having a little bit of rust on the edges also. But uh, well, I wanna keep it dark as this is going to stand underneath my woody band um, display. And there's going to be lights and woody band, so it needs a dark surface for the woody band to pop, basically. So I'm using a voodoo gel stain again to control a little bit of the patina. So. This is Temptress, a teal. And um, let's see if you can see. Let's see, see if you can see. So this should be dry at the bottom there. But um, if you want to have some of the areas and you want to enhance that, just put a little bit of the. Voodoo gel stain on there and just rub it in. This way you can control the patina, but you can't when you when you use the spray. And the voodoo gel stain, it is it is translucent as it is a, a wood stain, and it is not gonna same thing here at the bottom here there's just like hardly any of the i've washed it down already this morning so um this should be dry the, the little bit which was running down here is not a problem so it is a translucent effect which i quite like you can use paint, you can use the chalk paints or something like that, chalk mineral paints, whatever you want to use, clay paints. Um, but like this, quite like that. As I said, you could also add a little more of the, the bronzer and use the spray. But like this, you can basically add a little more color also. Okay, Sarah, Michelle, I'm going to use the, um, even here, if you wanted to get it a little more bluish. could use also the um, Bayou Moss. Bayou Moss is like a greenish. Hi, Maclina. Long time no see. How are you, girl? So. 
so this gives it a little more of the dirty effect. Like the mossy, drippy. And those things will stand next to each other at the end, you know, just like two elements. These things don't work at the end because it's blocked up. You could even use, you know, if you have some areas where you, where you want to have like, I um, think there should be like more aging, you could use the um, it's probably the tobacco road is going to be the nicest. <laughs> Just have a little left in here. Let's see if I can get anything out there. Yeah, I can. <laughs> Obviously, I can. I can make a mess again. As I said, as this is like um, a wood stain, just to darken it a little more up. That's basically how you can work that. Just play around with it. I mean, this is so much fun. And um, as long as um, the patina paints, when you use the spray, are not sealed, the rust effect will carry on. So if you have a stage um at one stage where you say i want to keep it that way this is exactly the look i want to have seal it otherwise it will carry on um changing the look so which i don't mind usually i'll probably just let that happen because that's ever so amazing that's ever so amazing So and this is how you can basically use different products all the way around and have fun with it and you know just um I hope you enjoyed that. I did playing with it. Let's see. Let's see further back. Sorry guys. So that's basically this still got to dry and uh, over here we've done the first coat. Over here is the first coat. Um, the second coat's got to go on there. Actually, Sarah, I've got that from from a lovely colleague of mine, from Vanessa from Simply Vintage. She's uh, she's also a Dixieville and Woody Band and Grace on Design retailer over here in Germany. And uh, when she came to visit me, she said she has two of those cabinets and they would go perfect um, underneath uh, my Woody Band display. So she basically sold those to me. So um, that was quite lucky because they're perfect. And they are they are like real wood you know there's like they're really old and you know they're real wood massive wood so that's that's perfect <clears throat> thank you my friends 
<coughs> excuse me thank you michelle i'm happy you like that so there's going to go the second coat on there here's the second coat just put on this is still got to dry and you know let the magic happen and um, this is basically cleaned now and i'll see when that's uh, basically dry if i'm going to keep it that way and on this you know this side here is already basically the look how i quite like it you can sand it down also you can do just everything with it guys you know as long as you like it and just play around and whatever you know there's no no n there's no rule which can't be broken you know i like to break the rules <laughs> The base color. Um, the base color, I started off with uh, Mason Dixon Gray and um, Mason Dixon Gray and Rebel Yellow. So to have it like the faded look in the middle. The second coat, uh, then I came in with um, Sea Spray, Sea Spray and Pumpkin Spice and Gravel Road. And I've been stenciling with that and uh, added some texture on the top. This this is the uh, Moroccan. Oh, this is the Sanoya tile stencil by Dixieville. You can see underneath here. So I've done some raised stenciling and added some, you know, some texture on the outside. And then I added loads of steps. You know, and then I added again another coat of the Mason Dixon Gray on top with um, the Rebel Yellow, and I added a little bit of blueberry to get like a bit of the steely looking color in in between. And that's basically now the next step. So we're coming in now with the uh, with the all the videos are up there. If if you wanna if you wanna um, see them, you can catch them on YouTube, on Instagram, on on Facebook so you catch, can catch them everywhere so they're they're all still up what the, the steps we've done this is basically a layered look you know and there's like you can see when you go over here there's like you know you can see all the the colors basically coming through you know there's like a little lighter in the middle you can see the pumpkin spice coming through here you can see the tix te texture, yeah, the texture on the outside. So this is uh, loads of steps going in here. And the longer you look, the more you can basically see. You can see some of the Bayou Moss. I've added here a little bit of greenish. Um, I added some of the Tentress on here to make it a little bluer. This is this is fun. This is so much fun. And this is you know this looks so old now. This looks so old now and worn out and I like it. I hope you like it too, guys. I hope you like it too. I'm so happy. Oh, Jill. <laughs> yeah, me too. Sorry, I was, you know, Dune was just crazy and um, I tried to be uh, like a little bit, you know, back on on Thursdays now. I think Friday is not a very good day for for you guys for me to go on. But I thought, in, uh, you know, instead of doing nothing, I have to do just a little bit. Guys, I really appreciate that you've been with me tonight. Thank you so much for for joining me uh, again. Thank you, Sonia. Dankeschön, mein Hasen. Thank you, my lovelies. Uh, if you watch replay and you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them into the comments or shoot me a message, whatever. Um, if you haven't done it, please leave me a follow on my page. That would be absolutely fantastic. And uh, I hopefully catch you next week. You guys have a lovely weekend and you stay safe. Sarah, guys, you, you know, I'm so happy you've been here. Take care. Ta-da. Bye-bye. Bye, my friends. Merci à tu, Michel. Merci. Au revoir. Bonne nuit.